Hey guys, so I wanted to work through this example from class. We did it in class, but I wanted to kind of show you how I would approach it and how I would look at it and how I would make decisions that I would make as we work through a question that has a lot of variable manipulation dealing with uh, circular motion here. So um, first, obviously, we read the question. We got it. You can read through the question. What's given to us? Well, we're given the period. It says, I have the ball goes through one revolution in time T. I've got the mass, which is M. And then I've got the length of the rope. Okay. And so it's asking me to find tension and the angle based off of those two things and or those three things and those three things only. All right. It does say there is a constant speed, but we don't have it. So that'll be important to use. But in the end, we can't have that speed as part of our answer. So, you know, what we've got here is we've got the tether ball hanging down. It's swinging around in a circle. And we've got our angle of theta. So it wants us to find theta. And it also wants us to find the tension in the cord. Now, two things that you should be doing right off the bat. Number one, you should be saying, oh, this is a circular motion question. What is the centripetal force? Now, in order to do that, the best thing to do is to draw a free body diagram on the ball. So here's my ball. We've got tension that's pulling up this way with, yes, that same angle there. And then we've got the force of gravity, which is pulling down on it like that. Now, you put those two together. Those are the only two forces. And so you can already tell that part of that tension, the vertical part, is going to balance gravity. The other part of that tension is pointing to the left, which at this point to the left is towards the middle of the circle. That is my centripetal force. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to say that the centripetal force is the force of tension in the x direction. All right. Now, I do know that the question wants me to find the overall tension, right? So the overall tension relative to the tension in the x direction, I can use because this is theta, right? That's, uh, these are both vertical. Those are what we call alternate interior angles. Those two angles are equal. So this angle, I can use that angle right there to connect tension, which is the hypotenuse, to the vertical piece, or the horizontal piece there, which is the tension in the x direction. All right, so we'll go ahead and put that in and we'll say that sine of theta is equal to tension in the x direction over the overall, sorry, I should use the force of tension because I've got period there and then the force of, the overall force of tension. And so I can insert that because that means the force of tension times sine of theta is equal to the force of tension in the x direction. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in for the force of tension in the x direction. I'm also going to go ahead and because it's centripetal force, I'm gonna put in that mv squared over r. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be important because they told me constant speed v. So that is letting me know that it is that kind of constant uniform circular motion. So I'm gonna go ahead and put both of those in at the same time. So mv squared over r is equal to ft sine theta. Now that sine theta bugs me a little bit because I don't know the angle, but for now I'm going to go ahead and leave it and just kind of see what happens as I work through this. All right. So I'm going to work on that left hand side because I've got the V, which I don't know where that is. And it's not part of what I'm looking for anyway. And I've also got that R, which I don't know what the R is. And so I'm going to try to work on those two things to try to figure out how this then connects and applies. Now, hopefully you've got this right here that you're recognizing that in the original question, this is the length of the string and R is this down here. R is the radius of the circle. So it's this piece of the uh the triangle there and so notice that that is opposite and hypotenuse which again is sine this is good because i'm seeing that same sine theta this is the same theta that we had with the tension because those two were both 
the angle at which the string was hanging. So that's good, we've got a connection. We see another sine theta here. Yeah, it was a little bit bothersome that we have it here, but we are seeing a sine theta. Hopefully things will come out in the wash. Remember, sometimes we feel like we really need something and it just turns out that it ends up not being all that important after all. So we do have that sine of theta there. Sine of theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so essentially R is equal to L sine theta. So I can put that in for R over here. So I'm gonna go back to my original equation. The mass is fine. Um, hopefully, oh yeah, it does give us the mass there. That can be part of our question. So we've got the mass, the velocity, I'm still looking for that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that alone for a little while. But the L, I can go ahead and put that in for the R, I can put in the L sine theta, which is equal to the force of tension times sine of theta. Now, don't get too excited. Don't say, ah, oh, the sine theta is crossed out. No, 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 this one's on the bottom. This one's on the top. So those aren't gonna cross out. If I wanna move that over, it's gonna end up giving me sine squared of theta because I need to multiply by sine of theta. So, so don't get too overly excited, but we will get there. All right, so now I need something for that velocity because it is a constant speed, constant V, but I don't, I'm not allowed to use that. That's not one of the three variables I'm allowed to use. So let's see if we can write that V in terms of something else. Well, we know how much time it takes to go around the circle. And we know the distance, or we can figure out the distance to go around the circle. Remember we talked about in class that the speed is just distance over time. So what is the distance around the circle? Well, the distance around the circle is m, uh, sorry, not m. The distance around the circle is pi, two pi, r. It's just the, the circumference. Divide that by the time, which is t. So two pi r over t is the same thing as v. Now, we also know what r is, right? We just found out that r was L sine theta. So this can simplify to, well, not necessarily simplify, but I can change it to L sine theta over t. So all of that is equal to v. So now I can put that in to my equation over here for v. So I go two pi L sine theta over that period, and remember that V is squared here, and now you may start seeing something happening here, right? From here, we can start doing some simplification, all right? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna square everything that's in that squared, and then the T is on the bottom of the fraction, so I'm actually gonna move it down to the bottom of the fraction here, okay? So I'm gonna have M times two squared, pi squared, L squared, sine squared of theta. And then on the bottom, I've got L sine theta. And I also have that period, which also needs to be squared. So period squared, like that. That needs to be equal to the force of tension times sine of theta. Okay, at this point, there are a couple of things we can cancel out. We can cancel out one of those signs. So that sine squared is just gonna become sine. I can cancel out one of those L's. So the L squared is just L now. And so this is all gonna simplify to M. I'm gonna change that to a four because it's two squared. Then I got the pi squared. I still got an L sine theta all over T squared equals F T sine theta. And I can divide both sides by sine theta, leaving me with the force of tension being equal to 4m pi squared L over T squared. And you'll notice now it's only in terms of those three variables that I was allowed to use. Now, that felt like a long process, but really what happened? Well, I first found out what the centripetal force was. I said the centripetal force is the horizontal tension. I then changed that horizontal tension to something that I was looking for, right? You always want the thing that you're looking for to be in your equation. So I made it be equal to the force of tension. And so I figured out what's the relationship between the force of tension and the force of tension in the X direction. I substituted that in so I can actually eventually solve for something that I want. I got theta there too, but I'm supposed to be finding the angle as well. Then I changed the centripetal force into mv squared of r, which is what we do in almost all of these centripetal force questions. And then I substituted for the variables that I didn't have. 
I used the triangle to solve for R in terms of L, and then I used that idea of distance over time to get the V. Once I put all those things together, yeah, there was a little bit of ugly algebra going on. You may do the algebra in a different process or a different set of steps than I do, but eventually you should get down to this final answer where we have the force of tension, which is equal to 4m pi squared L over the period squared. We've got the tension. Yay us! Okay, now the second question is we need to find the angle. Now, don't worry too much. The angle isn't going to actually be too bad because now we actually know what the force of tension is, right? We know that the force of tension, which is what goes over here in our, force bo our free body diagram, the force of tension is all that ugly stuff there, okay? We also know the vertical part of tension because the vertical part of tension has to balance gravity, which is simply mg. And so don't make this too complicated. Just connect that side with the hypotenuse. That's the adjacent side. So we're just going to go cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which was 4m pi squared L over t squared. And that will equal, uh, oh, that's already equal to cosine theta. So now we should be able to go in and just do a little bit of canceling. I'm dividing mg by this, which means I can just multiply by the reciprocal. So the t squared is gonna end up going up on the top. The m's there are gonna end up canceling out. And so I should end up just getting cosine of theta is equal to g t squared over four pi squared L. And then of course, theta is just the inverse cosine of that. And so our final answer will be that theta is equal to cosine inverse of g t squared over four pi L. And we're done. We just solved for theta, again, in terms of g, t, and l, uh, which g is a universal constant, as is pi. And so we've been able to, again, solve for in terms of the variables that we were supposed to have. So hopefully that was helpful in just kind of talking through the process that we would go through. In class, it was a little bit roundabout because we were just kind of letting people talk and give ideas. But this is hopefully what we would eventually hope to come down to is we're looking to try to substitute for the things that we don't have. And we're, of course, continuing with that idea of setting them equal to each other. All right. So hopefully that video is helpful and uh, you can watch another one if you'd like.